I have been playing The Forbidden Lands for a few months now, both as a player and a GM, and I can say that I like it quite a lot. It's been published in 2019, I believe, maybe 2018 in Swedish, by the Swedish publisher Free League, and they have published quite a nice selection of RPGs in the past from uh, which I like uh, quite a few. What first drew me uh, in and woke my interest for the game was uh, their cover artwork and their like tagline which is Raiders and Roaches in a Cursed Land. And that just sparked my imagination. Why is the land cursed? What's going on there? What adventures might I encounter? And uh, I downloaded their quick start rules, they were nice enough. And then eventually uh, Clockwork Publishing made a Kickstarter for the German translation. And that is when I uh, supported them and got the big box set with all bells and whistles. The artwork in the book is all made by a famous Swedish illustrator. Well, I personally don't know, but I like his art style. It's like a clean black and white uh, art style, which reminds me of old DSA books that I used to read when I started out in the hobby in like the early 2000s. The Forbidden Lands is described as a game that combines old school feel with new school rules and I think it succeeds at this premise. The basic concept of the game is that of a hex crawl. Basically you divide your gaming world, your map, into six-sided spaces that are 10 kilometers across. So if the characters were to stand on a small hill or climb a tree in the middle of this 10 kilometer hex, they could see all the edges. And then you just drop your group somewhere in the middle of this map or at the border if you so like. And they can explore it hex by hex and try to survive. The game has, I think, some very elegant rules that fit nicely into this theme of survival. The basic resolution is a dice pool system. You take dice according to your attribute, your skills and your equipment and roll all of these dice and only sixes count as success. You can re-roll them, but all of the ones have to stay. And uh, after the re-roll, all the ones on the die for your attributes or your equipment do damage to that attribute or equipment. Your attributes double up as your hit points. So as you uh, re-roll and take damage, as you uh, fight and take damage, your attributes will get lower and lower, uh, simulating that over the course of the adventure your characters will get worn down, they will get exhausted their weapons will get blunt, their armor will break, and eventually they will have to uh, take a break and recuperate and fix their equipment. Also there are rules for like uh, special damage like sleep deprivation, freezing to death, starvation, dying of thirst, sickness, uh, play into this system. Where uh, at the beginning it's not that bad, and they only stop you from recovering your attribute points. But then slowly you get more and more damage each day that you can't regenerate until you've starved to death. The rules are not really a detailed simulation of wilderness survival. They are fairly abstract for the most part. For example, they separate, they divide a day into four six-hour parts and each activity you might do on a given day takes up 
a six hour part, no matter if it would be longer or shorter, which is quite abstract, but it makes the game manageable. If you were uh, to put it into 24 parts, that would be a lot of uh, bookkeeping, how many hours are left in the day. Or if you were to put it into minutes, that would be a lot of bookkeeping. I think the rules strike a good balance between realism and playability. And for the game I'm running, it's perfectly fine. At first glance, I thought the system was extremely deadly. When uh, you get reduced to zero in one of your attributes, you have to roll on uh, a critical hit table. And on that table is stuff like head chopped off, limbs chopped off, punctured heart, and your character just dies instantly or is tripled forever. But in playing it, I found it's not too bad. Uh, even if you have to roll on these tables, most of those uh, rolls are totally survivable. But after a while, your characters will get a good collection of scars because it's pretty easy to fall to zero hit points. I suppose it is a deadly system compared to D&D 5th edition, but it's not as deadly as like Call of Cthulhu or some old school renaissance games I know. Uh, I think it strikes a good balance because, uh, between these old school dangerous feel and having some character survivability so you don't have to introduce new characters each session. One concept in the rules is called willpower. Willpower points are used to activate your special abilities. The fighters can do like extra attacks or ignore armor and wizards can do their spells with willpower. And you basically gain willpower when you re-roll a roll, when you force a roll and you get damage on your attributes or equipment from rolling once. Because you need willpower to activate your special abilities and spells, I found my players always wanted a good amount of willpower before the start of any adventure, before heading into the wilderness. And what ended up happening, when they were in town, they started doing a lot of uh, pretty mundane tasks, but I let them roll for it, like for example, uh, the bard of the group went into the tavern to play music. Uh, the blacksmith in the group got, hired himself, got himself hired by the local blacksmith and did some work there for a few coins for penance, really. Um, but before I realized what was happening, the dwarf was up to the maximum amount of 10 willpower. And since then, I, uh, I'm a lot more careful and choosing when to actually require a role. I like the general concept that the adventurers will try to prepare themselves for the next adventure when they are in town, but I think they shouldn't get more than like three or four points in doing this because it is a safe way and you shouldn't roll on safe things when there are no risk for any consequences. I like the general concept of willpower and I think with some tweaking, some house rules and more discipline on my part as a GM and not requiring uh, too many roles for safe things, it's pretty solid. What I don't like about the rules is uh, the spells and special talents. I think they are pretty boring and unimaginative, and there aren't that many of them. Also, the class system is very rigid without any uh, cross multiclassing. But between me and my group, we can probably come up with our own spells and special talents. And also, your class only 
determines like a third of what your character can do because most of the special abilities everyone can take so it's not too much of a problem i like the setting of the forbidden lands quite a bit as it fits neatly into the concept of exploration and survival basically uh, you have your fantasy world with dwarves and elves but for 500 years everything uh, was covered at night by a blood red mist and people wouldn't leave their villages because if they did they would just vanish into the mist they would be eaten up by the mist so for 500 years no one traveled that much and now that the uh, mist is gone all these unknown lands are free to be discovered there are a lot of old ruins that haven't been properly searched and plundered yet and every town every village you encounter will have uh, quite its own and unique culture because they were so separated for so long it's not the best setting if you want to run like city intrigue or thief heist type of adventures because there are no real big cities left in the setting in the gaming world the game has a clever concept you can easily copy into any gaming system where uh, the location of a given adventure module of a given adventure location is not actually fixed on the map you can put it uh, wherever you seem fit as a gm and as i would do it uh, i would put rumors into my world and when uh, the player characters hear those rumors of the adventure locations i place the adventure location on the map probably not too far away because it's a very local rumor and only then do I place the location on the map or uh, if you do not spread these rumors you might just put the location on the map when your players enter a hex where they might discover something when you need them to find an adventure location just take one you have prepared and put it right where your adventurers are going the good thing about this concept is that you do not waste your preparation you can prepare these locations and make sure that eventually your players will find them without having to railroad them hard to find them you can just place them where they are going anywhere and you're not in danger of preparing something no one will ever see the game also has some neat rules and tables on which you can roll upon to quickly make your own adventure locations be it uh, towns fortresses or dungeons and with a few rules you have something with its own feel that will be uh, also pretty new that will also be pretty unique but also the game has uh, some of the best pre-written adventure modules I personally know uh, they are written they're worked out in style that is very similar to the way I prepare adventures so uh, you get your locations and you get your characters and your factions and a few plot hooks of what might happen but not a clear predetermined plot you have to follow your characters have to follow and that makes it very easy for me to run these games with very little preparation there are a few adventure locations i think three in the core rules and they also have uh, their first official campaign the raven's perch i got at the kickstarter and 
it features some very interesting adventure locations and characters and a lot of different factions that are working against each other but also like sub factions within factions that are working against each other in secret and your players can theoretically meet and uh, befriend or make an enemy out of any of them my group is not very far into the campaign yet but i think as the campaign progresses these different characters and factions will make for an interesting dynamic and give a lot of opportunities how the plot could develop and how the world will look at the end of the campaign. They also have a small collection of uh, adventure locations called the Tower of Quetzal and it's a collection of very unique adventure locations all with their own feel with their own little thing that makes them special and you can just take them and drop them somewhere in your gaming world when you just happen to need another wild adventure location and you can probably use them with very little uh, converting work in almost any other system I got the German print version in the Kickstarter and it's got these uh, nice hardcover fox leather bound books and it also came with uh, a double sided map and a sticker sheet so you can just place your adventure locations on the map using the stickers or using a pen and then you can just flip the map over use it again for a second campaign in the same world all in all i like the forbidden lands quite a lot and i would recommend that you check it out you can find uh, free quick start rules at the publisher's website and I will leave a link to it in the video description. That's it for today. Thanks and goodbye.